Hi everyone, welcome to Chef's Travels. I'm Kevin Harrington. Uh, today we are in for a treat. I am cooking one of Britain's more traditional dishes. Yep, I'm making chicken tikka masala. That ain't British, I hear you say. Well, actually it is. And later on, I'll tell you why it is. I know there's a lot of Indians and a lot of Pakistanis out there. I'm gonna hate me for saying this, but it is a classic British dish. So, without further ado, let's get a shot on the road. So, for the ingredients for this dish, we're actually pretty much cooking two different curries and emulgating them into one at the end. So, for the marinade, basically in the beginning, this is what we've got. Um, some whole cumin, some whole coriander, I've kept them separate for a reason, I'll show you why in a minute. A lemon cut in half, some garlic, some fresh ginger, some chilli powder, some turmeric, some coriander powder and some garam masala and also some food colour, red food colouring. I'll explain later why. I've also got some mustard oil which I'll be using and some Greek yoghurt. That's all for the marinade which I should be putting together in a minute. So first things first, I'm going to get a hot pan and I'm going to take my whole cumin seed and my whole coriander seed and what I'm doing basically is I'm going to just cook them off a little bit because they give off such a lovely better aroma and taste when they've been heated up and pan fried for a little bit. Not too much, just enough to bring that, start melting the oils within the seed and um, bring out all the goodness they've got in there. Just a case of slightly heating them up. As I say, you don't want to cook them too much, just literally enough to break down the oils inside the seed and uh, start getting them to pop and reduce their, release their lovely flavours. So there you go, I can smell the aromas coming off them now. Basically that's enough for that. And what I'm going to do is put them in a pestle and mortar. So that goes in the pestle and mortar. Turn the gas off for the moment because we don't need it. This is all part of the marinade. And the reason I'm doing this is because basically the flavor is just so much more powerful from freshly ground um, spices rather than powdered ones that you will buy in the shops that probably aren't even fresh. Not only are they not fresh, but they've probably been sat on the shelf for a long time and lost all their all their goodness. So this way you're getting a hundred percent goodness out of your seeds and whew, that smell, have a smell. If you could smell that, I'll tell you what, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. So basically just find grind them down to as fine a paste as possible, not a paste of powder should I say. Um, they don't have to be a complete powder, just enough to break them up and let all those lovely flavours out. The next thing we're going to do with that is take our chicken, put all those lovely coriander and cumin seeds in there. We're then also going to use the rest of these ingredients are going to go in. So your fresh ginger, fresh garlic, chili powder, cumin, and food colouring. All that goes in there. Next, we're gonna use Greek yogurt. It has to be Greek yogurt because it's just, you couldn't use like a fruit yogurt or anything like that, it wouldn't be right. Greek yogurt, Preferably not too, um, isn't, isn't sour and uh, doesn't take away the goodness of the flavours or, or everything else. So that all goes in there like that. And basically what we do is just mix all that in. Some people use their hands. I don't like to use my hands unless I use plastic gloves with it. But I haven't got plastic gloves so it's going to be a spoon and just give it a good old mixing absolutely fine no problem at all some fresh ground pepper in there a 
little bit of salt and then finally some lemon juice the reason I'm using a strainer is because I don't want the pips in there I would use my hand but I haven't got gloves on so I'm not going to do that so basically two halves of lemon in there just to give it that lovely lemony soury sort of flavour as well and that all mixes in there and as you can see it's got a lovely lovely little red colour which pretty much is what this dish is about the colour the taste everything about it is what makes it a chicken tikka masala so that's pretty much good enough now what we're going to do with that is leave it in the fridge now ideally around six hours i'll just say something i've used chicken thighs for this dish because i find chicken breast is too dry and it's going to have it like a second cooking process which with chicken breast would actually dry it out whereas chicken thighs hold it a lot better and basically stay a lot moist a lot more moist and make the dish more palatable so basically that's going to go in the fridge for six hours um, I'm not going to leave the video running for six hours so I'll see you when I get back for the main sauce we've got some cassia bark I would use cinnamon but I prefer cassia bark for this dish it's a little bit more palatable um, some cardamom seeds which I've sort of like crushed with a knife and opened up some cloves whole cloves some whole coriander and some whole cumin seed and some bay leaves I've also got some crushed garlic, some scotch bonnet chilli, I'm going to use one, the reason I'm using scotch bonnet is because I love the flavour and I love the taste of it and I love the potency of it, you can use any chilli you want but I'm using scotch bonnet, um, some garlic, some chilli powder, some turmeric powder, some cumin powder and some garam masala and also a little bit of food colouring. <clears throat> I've also got some chopped tomatoes, some chicken, and two onions, finely diced. They really have to be finely diced because um, they're gonna break down. And also some ghee. I've also got some cashew nuts soaking in some milk. I shall explain that all reason why later. I've also got some rice soaking in some water, some double cream, some fresh coriander, I've got the stalks cut up in one pot and the leaves cut up in another. Again, I shall enlighten you at a later stage why I've done that. So, without further ado, let's get cooking. And so this is how we start making the sauce. Basically, hot pan, put your ghee in. If you want to use olive oil, you're very welcome to. If you want to use sunflower oil, if you want to use any oil, nut oil, absolutely brilliant use whatever you like i love ghee i love the flavor and it also gets to a lovely hot heat without burning i'm also going to put a little bit of mustard oil in with the ghee the next thing we want to do is put all our dry spices in there all our seeds and spices in there basically going to let them cook out a little bit until they start popping we don't want to cook them too much. Once they start popping, that's when they start releasing all their flavours. And already I can smell the lovely fragrance coming off there. So gorgeous. I'm so pleased to be cooking this dish tonight. One of my favourites. You know, you know what when they always say what would be if, if they told you you're going to uh, you're gonna have your last meal what would it be well this one definitely ranks within the top five of my favorite dishes so in with the onions and what we want to do is brown these onions off we really need to have a brown flavor a brown coloring you don't want to eat too high you don't want to burn them and bearing in mind these are also going to be reducing down for about an hour so basically just enough heat to colour them, get them going golden brown. So 
So in the meantime, let me tell you a little bit something, a little bit about um, chicken tikka masala. So back in the day, before chicken tikka masala came out, they used to be very popular with tandoori chicken and chicken tikka as well, which, and I'll probably get slayed for saying this, are pretty much the same marinade as what we've used for this chicken tikka masala. However, what happened is sometimes they made too much. And they thought, what can we do with this? So they thought, we'll make a sauce with it and call it chicken tikka masala. So yeah, in all fairness, it was created by the Indians and the Pakistanis, but it was created in Britain. So that makes it a British dish in my eyes. And, you know, don't put my, don't put my neck on the block. I'm only going through information I've heard. So if you know anything different, feel free to comment below. I'm always interested in hearing your comments. Um, thanks to those who subscribed. Uh, you need to know the recipes for all my dishes I'm cooking. If you click that little arrow, probably about there, I think it's about there, it could be that side. There's a little arrow there, if you click that, it gives you a drop down and my recipes for all my dishes are all underneath there. Also links to where you can buy ingredients, products, um, anything you need to create these dishes. Those onions are now brown enough as I want them to go. Put them in tomato. And that is going to render down the lovely sauce. do now, put that on the back burner, and let that cook away on a low heat for about an hour. I'm just going to put a lid on it. In the meantime, I'm going to get a pan on, put it on quite high. Put some mustard oil in there. So I've had the chicken marinating for about six hours now. I'll give it a little stir, make sure it's all mixed in. And what we want to try and do is individually cook each piece. I don't want to pour it all in there because I want it to fry, I don't want it to, um, I don't want it to stew. Now you could put this in the oven. If you had a tandoori oven, even better still. But I'm not privileged enough to have a tandoori oven, so I'm using this option, which is absolutely passable and acceptable, should I say. So it's a bit of a patience game, you know, don't rush it. You've got to take time with food. It's a pleasure, not a waste. So we're going to let that basically brown off. The onions and the tomatoes cooking away lovely in the back. As I say, on a very low heat because it's going to break down pretty much a sauce. You don't want any whole bits in there, any chunks or anything like that. I haven't put any water with it or anything because, as I say, I want it to reduce down to a kind of like a paste. That's all cooking away nicely. You can see those colours are just absolutely magnificent. It looks mouth-watering before it's even ready. We don't want to burn this, we want to just get it just right. So it's got that, got that nice orangey effect on it. Is that is the colour we're looking for for this dish. As you well know, 
when you go to your little Indian restaurant, this is how it comes out looking. And I'll guarantee you, once you try this recipe, I don't mean to take any away, anything away from the restaurants, but this is definitely hands down much better. The flavors, you know, and the fact that you made it at home as well. You haven't got to go outside, you haven't got to go out. Absolutely brilliant. So the onions are cooking away, and the tomatoes are cooking away. Coming up into a nice little paste. Now it doesn't matter if you don't cook this chicken 100%, I mean obviously cook it through, but you don't want it completely cooked because this is just one part one of the cooking process. There's going to be a second phase to it, which will cook it completely out. You don't want to cook it too much at this point because again, you don't want it drying out. All these little babies can come out. So the onions and the tomatoes have broken down and started to form into a paste. And at this stage, what I'm going to do is add the rest of my spices and herbs. So they all go in there like that. As I said, I've only used one chili. It's a Scotch bonnet. It is rather a hot chili. You can make it as hot or as mild as you like. If you want it mild, then don't put any chilies in at all. We'll just put a couple in. If you want it extremely hot, put three or four Scotch bonnets in and it will blow your off, basically speaking. So that's lovely, all the spices and herbs in there now. I'm also going to put the coriander stalks in there. The reason I say stalks is because they actually hold the most flavour. Coriander stalks hold the most flavour. Leaves are really good for garnish. But if you want a pungent, lovely flavour, the stalks are what's got it. Just give those little chicken bits a turn over. You don't want them burnt. And what we do is stir in the coriander, and that is starting to come on an absolute treat. And the smell coming off that is absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, the onions and the tomatoes have all broken down and they'll now become like a kind of paste. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could put this through a blender and make it really, really smooth, but I'm not going to go to that extreme. So again, I'm going to put them on the back burner, let them cook away for a little bit more before we go to part two. That's our chicken all done. Take that all out. Get that ready. And on to part two. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. And as you can see, this has now become more of a paste than anything else. A lovely curry flavoured paste. And what we're going to do at this stage, although I didn't have it in the recipe, I'm also going to put some tomato puree in there because it just gives it an extra boost. It gives it that extra little kick that this dish really appreciates. So then with a bit of tomato sauce, as you can see, what I do is I'll put a spoon in the end of it and turn it um, I find that uses all the tomato paste up out of the tube and none goes to waste. You can do that with your toothpaste as well. So, tomato puree in. And 
And the next thing we're going to do is turn the heat up a little bit. And in goes our chicken. And I can guarantee you, my kitchen now smells, my kitchen actually smells like an Indian restaurant. And I'm not complaining, because I love that smell. So basically mix everything in on a high heat, let all those flavours emulgate, come together. As part of this dish, what we do is we take some milk with some cashew nuts. And I've left this soaking for about an hour. And what we're going to do is blend it. So there we have it, milk with cashew nuts, and that gets poured in there like that. If you don't have cashew nuts, then use walnuts or any other nuts, but I find cashew nuts are actually the perfect for this one because they're not too um, flavoursome. If you do have someone who suffers from Nut allergy, make sure they know about it because um, you don't want any upsets at the dinner table. So there you go, as you can see, chicken tikka masala is coming on a treat. And for the final touch of this dish, we add to this some double cream. Good old traditional English double cream, and that goes in there like that. Give that a little stir. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my take on, yes, a traditional British dish, chicken tikka masala. The water for the rice is boiling away. What we're gonna do, drain all the water off. This rice has been soaking for about an hour. I've washed it off about five times to take all the starch off as well. And that goes in there like that. And that goes in there for seven minutes. You must put it in boiling water though. The water has to be boiling, rolling boiling basically. This rice has got to be al dente. It's no good cooking it, overcooking it. If you overcook it, this system won't work. It's got to be al dente, but pretty much cooked. Just a little bit of grease nest in the middle. There you go. The bell has gone. So we drain the water off, strain it, wash it over with hot water just to get any start, any more starch off it. It is basically the starch that will make it all sticky. So we're washing it off with hot water, and that'll pretty much do. And what we do with the pan, believe it or not. two pieces of bread in the bottom like so excuse fingers but no one's going to be eating that bread anyway the next thing we do is take our rice and the rice goes on top of that like so may seem a bit bizarre let's put some butter in there like so I'm going to turn the heat right down on this. The butter goes in there like that. Next thing we do, some saffron. Some people mix their saffron with water. Um, I like to keep the whole thing so that it just gives off all its flavour. And the steam from the rice should be enough make that happen and then what I do with the red food coloring little drop there little drop there and a little drop in there now if you have some blue food coloring or some green food coloring you can put that in there as well and then when you stir it at the end you're actually gonna have what is commonly known 
as rainbow rice. So with that all done, what we do, put a, put a lid on it, and that goes on the back burner on a really low heat, and probably about another half hour. So that rice has been cooking away for about half hour now. The reason I put the bread at the bottom of it is basically to stop it burning. So as you can see, absolutely lovely fluffy rice. So thank you everyone who's subscribed to my channel so far. If you'd like to subscribe or give me a cheeky little thumbs up, all really appreciated. Today we've been cooking chicken tikka masala, one of my favorite dishes, traditional Brit dish. Um, there's some people who disagree with that. There's other people who say, yeah, it's definitely a Brit grish. Uh, try to say that when you're pissed. A Brit dish. Um, now, this is being cooked today because a very good friend of mine, a subscriber named Mr. Paul Edwards, asked me if I could make a chicken tikka masala. Well, Paul, there you have it. I've made this specially for you. If only you were here to taste it, I'll probably share a beer with you whilst we're at it. But unfortunately, you're not. So. Um, thanks for choosing this dish anyway, um, chicken tikka masala. And so ladies and gentlemen, as usual, the proof is in the pudding. This is my dish. Thank you very much for joining us here at Chef Travels. Um, today's been an absolute pleasure. Again, one of my favourite dishes. Um, this is my plate of food, so I can actually eat it over it. You know what? I'm going to keep this ending very short because I'm actually going to go and devour this like an animal and like it should be devoured because it is absolutely divine, gorgeous, fantastic. You know what? If this had been served to me in an Indian restaurant, I wouldn't believe it had been cooked by a British chef, but it is after all a British. British, a trad British um, dish. So on that note, thank you for joining me at Chef's Travels. My name is Kevin Harrington and hopefully see you on the next mission.